down to Biscay. Yay. Uh, five on the floor. Ride for my dogs. Where here's the thing. You can check the score. Hustle hard, couple scars, wearing bubble frogs. Just like Buckley said, you in trouble, y'all. Kept the floor playing. Got an all band. Y'all seen the block. Stop the one hand. And Pat, we trust. It's power to have the guts. We're here to bring the heat. Y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. Welcome back to Five on the Floor. A little bit of a new voice today. First time someone else was getting to play point guard once in a while, but a huge game, 109-99 victory over our rival New York Knicks. I am Sean Rochester. I am joined on the floor with Greg Sylvander. And major passing. So they're going to be supporting me a lot tonight. I am going to throw it around to them as we talk about this big victory tonight. Um, let's start with the gamer of the night. And now on Five on the Floor, it's time for the Gamer of the Night, sponsored by Rock Esports Center, the place to eat, drink, and play all day. Host your next birthday party with them. Located at 15305 South Dixie Highway in Palmetto Bay, they've got a 5,500-square-foot state-of-the-art center equipped with all the high-end power. Play all-day passes, available for just 25 bucks. but if you mention five reasons... It's just $20. So mention five reasons or five RSN. You get to play all day for $20. And now, the gamer of the night. And I think in honor of what we believe to be Major Pass's first post-game victory on the show, we're going to let him talk about the gamer of the night, which is is a pretty easy answer. Go ahead, Major. Yeah, so I, y'all don't even know how excited I am that they finally won and I don't have to talk about a depressing loss. Like It's <laughs> the happiest day of my life right here. Um, but it's obviously Terry Rozier. Like, by far his best game with the Heat. Every bucket was absolutely needed. Set the tone. I mean, his step back threes were just ridiculous. Um, this is exactly what he was brought to the Heat to do, to get a bucket. Um, Jimmy kind of disappeared a little bit in the second half. I thought he was passing really well. Um, but they needed someone to step up and get those big time buckets. And it seemed like every single time it was Terry Rozier. I mean, he was off the top of my head. I believe he was eight of 11 from threes. Um, Just absolutely ridiculous. All of them were like step backs, um, creating his own shot. So that's something that I think will translate into a playoff setting. I mean, this game was very playoff like Um, each bucket was very important. Each possession was very important. And, Terry was perfect in this game. I mean, I don't think you could even come up with a single thing to be upset at him about. Um, Just absolutely perfect game from him. And it makes me so excited for the future because if this is what he can do um, and starting to find his rhythm with the team, that elevates the whole team up um, to where Jimmy doesn't have to always be that guy um, in a playoff setting, be that guy to win his one-on-one matchup and get a bucket you have another guy that can consistently do that on multiple levels of the floor. Yeah. And, you know, to add on to that, before I swing it to Greg, like this is what you brought Terry here for. You know, I think that's the point you're making is, you know, we've, we've experienced the Kyle Lowry experience and there were highs and lows, but that ability to take over a game is really what you paid that first round pick for. That's why you brought him into this bill. Greg, what did you think about Terry's performance today? It was huge. It was, um, I mean, if you just look over over the last three wins, um, 22, 27, 34, he's ex- accelerating at a rapid rate, and that's good to see. Like, this is, um, you've all said it, exactly what Terry was brought here to do, and I think it can translate into playoff settings. Like, that's the biggest part to me that stands out is that this isn't the kind of stuff where you look at it and you say, you know what? That looks like regular season success. To me, it looks like the kind of stuff that translates into a playoff series, particularly when stuff breaks down and the game plans get thrown out the window and you've been scouted and everyone knows your tendencies, but you got a guy that can just go out and get buckets for you. And so t- tonight to be 10 of 15, 8 of 11 from uh, the three-point line, 6 of 6 from the uh, free throw line, he was perfect. And um, you know, to that point, they needed it because Bam 
in the first half was very quiet. He picked it up in the second half. Jimmy Butler had a relatively pedestrian evening by his standards, so they needed it to be all about Terry Rozier, and that's what they got tonight, and that's why he's the gamer of the night. Yeah, and you know, stay on the topic of the offense, and, and by all means, jump into other guys if you want to when you're talking about this. But Heat offense tonight, 118.5 offensive rating. This season, when they finish above a 115, they're now – it is 28 and six above a 115 offensive rate. So when they just have almost just above average type offense, they're not a bad team. You know, we've we struggled at times to even score 100. So that's a good marker. He uh, talked about the three point shooting. Tonight, they shot um, 40%, 47% of their shots from behind the arc, which is insane. And when I was trying to kind of relive and get context of the game, I was like, guys, you got to help me understand this because, like, when those numbers get that high, sometimes it doesn't work out well especially if you're not making shots. But tonight, they certainly did make shots. 45.9% from behind the arc, their third highest three-point field goal percentage of the season. And one of the things that I'll note, 22% of those threes came from behind, or I should say 22% of their attempts came from the corners. That's the highest of the whole season. And in the corners, they shot 55.6%. That was like my, my uh, GPA in some of my classes when I was in college. That's incredible. So... <laughs> What did you guys think of your offense, you know, in general tonight? We talked about the 118 offensive rating. We talked about Terry, but Jimmy, Bam, others also contributed. So uh, let's go to Greg first this time. The offense was clicking, um, and it had a lot to do with the guy that I think we should highlight for play of the night. I'm going to go to it right now. And now it's time for the Insurance by Lynette Play of the Night, sponsored by insurancebylynette.com and A Aggressive Insurance Agency. You can reach out to our friend Lynette at 954 581 8800. That's 954 581 8800 or insurancebylynette.com. That's insurancebylynette.com with two N's and two T's. Your best play for auto insurance, homeowners insurance, condo insurance, life insurance, or a retirement program. Reach out to Lynette at insurancebylynette.com. So there's one particular play I'm going to get to, but I'm using this as a jumping off point to shout out Haywood Highsmith because he had a huge game and had a lot to do with the good shooting. He was uh, two of four from three, six of 11 overall, eight rebounds. Big game for him. He's a guy that I think uh, is going to find his way into Eric Spolster's rotations, and he was just the connective tissue in a lot of the good offensive sequences tonight. I thought that he played great defense as well. So to me, he was a big part of the glue that made their offense look better tonight. I know he wasn't one of their top shooters. Um, you know, I mean, 50% is still good. Uh, but you know, when you look at eight of 11 from Terry, you're really seeing that that's where the volume was shifted and the efficiency came from. Um, there was a play though, and I'll get to the a aggressive play of the night with three minutes to go where Haywood Highsmith hit a three when the heat were desperate for a bucket and he stepped back and he calmly sank a huge three late in that game. And so I'm calling that out as the play of the night because it really set the tone for the rest of the game. I think Sean, you shared pre-show. What was the run that they went on? 17. Yeah, Heisman kicked off a 17, seven run to finish the game after it was tied at 92, right before that shot. And just for That's... context, we had scored a field goal in the fourth quarter since the 950 mark. That's crazy. Almost six minutes, basically, time passed before another field goal. They needed it so much. So that's the play of the night, and I thought he was a big part of the offense. Major, what did you see from the offense, other than Terry and Haywood Highsmith, that you liked most? Yeah, I mean, real quick about that Highsmith shot. That was like the perfect, what are you doing? Oh, yes, thank you so much. Um, I was like, that is a terrible shot. Why are we going in? And then it went in. So, I mean, you can't be mad and – he calmed down the whole team and they got right back on track right after that. They just needed that one bucket. Um, but for the whole offense, I mean, he played, Spo played nine guys, I think, and seven of them hit a three. I mean, you're like 17 of 38 from the three point line. Um, to Sean's point, they hit a lot from the corners. I thought there was a lot of breakdowns. Um, defensively, if they got paint touches and kicked them out um, and swung the ball really well. Didn't feel like the ball was sticking until that part in the fourth quarter um, where Ed, the ball was not moving at all and they were waiting for one person to do things. And it 
a lot of times wasn't the ideal person to do it. But for most of the night, the ball was moving. Um, they were hitting shooters in good spots, good passes too. It wasn't like they're having to reach too far to the side to catch it, then shoot. They're pretty much in shooting pockets so they could, you know, fluidly go into their shots. There was just a lot to like um, about the offense. It was very decisive, off ball cutting, um, timely passes to hit the cutters. Um, there were a lot of turnovers, so that would be something you would want to cut back in um, certain points in the game. They would turn it over several times in a row. Um, but you're playing a good team in the Knicks, and even though they are missing some players, the Knicks are a hard-nosed team especially. I mean, you're going to have some rough patches and rough moments, but good teams find a way to win those games. Um, so, I, I mean, I thought everyone contributed on the offensive end um, in their own ways, whether it was cutting, hitting threes, um, being a connector. Um, I, I mean, Jovic, I think, has been way better than I expected him to be over this Agreed. last match. Um, even if his stats aren't fully showing it, just watching him being that connector, um, that's something Brady Hawk talks about a lot, him being that connector, kind of that middle man. Um, I feel like he would have a ridiculous number of hockey assists. Um, I just love the way he plays and that pace he brings. Um, I want to shout out Kevin Love. First game back, I didn't expect too much but it seemed like they might have held him out just a little bit extra so he actually can play to the level we need him to play at. Um, that was a huge boost to the team, I think, having Kevin Love and that spacing. Um, there's a specific play that stuck out. It was Jimmy cut basically to the middle of the paint, and Kevin Love was able to hit him with a perfect bounce pass and just went up for a perfect little bucket right there. That's something. It's not a big thing. It's just hitting a cutter. But – None of our other backup fives can do that, or you know, even a lot of our fours can't do that. So having Kevin Love to be able to do that, um, to play when Bam's not out there, it just makes a whole big difference in the world. But I mean, I think you could go person by person that played in this game and mention a couple things they did well um, on the offensive end. This is just the team we need at this time of the season. And I think you know you framed that very well because this was a playoff environment. You know, the crowd was in it, the, the intensity, the back and forth play and two good, you know, good teams in the East. He played, he went nine deep tonight. Do you think this is a sort of preview? Obviously we'll get to the injury report. We know there's one big name on there that may or may not come back, but those nine guys, the starters plus Kevin Love, Haywood Highsmith, Caleb Martin, and Jaime, do you guys think this is sort of becoming, you know, with under 10 games or less, this is becoming our playoff rotation, you Greg? Uh, I think so. I think I am no longer going to count on Tyler Hero in the rotation. He'll be incremental to to the total again. Uh, so to me, uh, this is the playoff rotation. I think Spo went to it tonight. You saw a precursor to what the, the what they'll do in the playoffs. Obviously, matchups can change uh, a ninth man here or there, but ultimately, I think that you saw the guys that he will get to in round one and um, in the games, in the high leverage situations. So that that's also telling too, is that you're getting to the end of the season and you're starting to see who Spoh's settling in on. And we know that it's been a rough year. I think there's been 35 or 36 different starting lineups. So he's still trying to figure out what he's trying to do there. And so for him to see, to see him start to settle in on a rotation also is, um, it's fun. It's just, you know, that playoff time is here. There was Knicks fans in the arena tonight being loud, heat fans hitting back at them. That's the kind of stuff you want to see late uh, in April. So we'll take it in early April, but we want to see a lot more of it as the playoffs get closer. Major, any quick thoughts on the rotation before we go to the injury report? No. Yeah. I mean, I think this actually is going to be the rotation. Um, kind of like Greg, I'm starting to count less and less on Tyler hero. Um, I mean, I think he'll probably end up playing uh, as my guess, but I don't think he'll be as big of a piece as if you asked me 10 games ago, even what I thought he was going to be. Um, but I mean, I think Highsmith was kind of that guy that I thought was kind of falling out. And now is you can't not play Highsmith. I mean, with how he's shooting that three and that corner three specifically, I mean, if he's hitting that three, it's PJ Tucker with a three point shot in the playoffs. And that is yeah. game changing. Um, so, yeah, it's these are going to be who's going to play. And I think before you go to the injury report, you know, when you talk about Tyler, obviously you you have to mention Duncan's name, and he's coming back from injury. The first couple of games back haven't been standout, right? Like 
I think we all have to understand there has to be patience in this process. They're kind of ramping it back up. Um, you can still see the connectiveness, which is something that you don't lose, but it's that, I think that physical trait, the touch with the ball, those types of things that are just going to take time. So I don't think it's one of those, uh, you know, if Duncan didn't have an injury and he was playing like this, the conversation may be a little different. But I think when you're coming back from injury, I think you have patience and, you know, worst comes to worst, you have options that can go into that spot. But I think Duncan, he'll get it back, especially with how strong he's played all season long. Um, let's go to the uh, Eric Rubenstein injury report. And now it's time for the official five on the floor injury report sponsored by our friend Eric Rubenstein, the personal injury attorney born and raised in Lauderdale, Florida, lives in Miami, went to St. Thomas. He's a South Florida guy and a huge Miami Heat fan. But the important thing is he can help you get your money that you deserve when something happens to you. So reach out to our guy, Eric Rubenstein. Again, ericrubenstein.com or ask about me. I got you on Instagram. And now the injury report. All right, I'm going to kick it over to Greg for the injury report. It's a short one, thankfully, for my opinion. It is. I love that. I love that I don't have a lot of injuries to report other than Tyler Hero. We're going to continue to wait for him. Woj said it could be uh, sometime in April. Shams has said he doesn't know when. Tyler has said that's all cap, and it's all quiet on our front. So I don't know what, what to believe, but right now, if he comes back, I'll be really excited about it for now, the team as is as constructed is what I'm going in uh, expecting to be the playoff rotation for now. Uh, So, but the good thing is Caleb Martin is back. You have all of your other guys playing and healthy. And so that's the first time in a while. So the injury report is clean and shout out to Eric Rubenstein for that fact. So not an injury report for us, but coming up Thursday night in Miami, another big game. Philadelphia 76ers come to town. Philly picks up a big win tonight. The Oklahoma City Thunder were here in Philadelphia where I'm at. Joel Embiid came back, which is a you know a big addition for them. Tyrese Maxey did not play tonight. I don't know what his injury is, but uh, they got the win against a very good Oklahoma City team. Embiid played 29 minutes, 24 points, 12 of 12 from the free throw line. So he's basically picking right up where he left off. Six rebounds, seven assists, three steals. Uh, six turnovers, which we know he does that a lot against Miami Heat. Looking ahead to Thursday, guys, what are you thinking? Because this week of games is, if there's anything to prepare you for the playoffs, it's like a run of strong teams that you almost, not must win, but you know what, you, you got to show up for this game on Thursday. You got to show up for those weekend games. What are you guys thinking uh, going into the Thursday game? I'm feeling good. I, I feel like this team um, – against Philadelphia specifically. Maybe it'll be a Thomas Bryant game, so that that can be fun uh, just because of the Joel Embiid factor and getting as much size out there as possible, but I'm feeling confident. I know that um, then they go on the road to Houston, and that may be a tougher game. Houston's been really playing well and playing spoiler a ton as they try to get back in that playing scenario out west. So I'm less bullish on the Friday night game, uh, and that's a second night of a back-to-back. But the the first night of that back to back, which is in Miami against Philadelphia, I see the Heat coming out and getting that victory and really cementing themselves as going after Indiana for the six seed versus falling back to the pack for the eight. Major, yeah, I'm a hundred percent with Greg. Um, I think you have a good opportunity, even if Joel and Maxi play. Um, it'll still just be Joel's second game, um, and he did have a great game today, but. We're a little bit more of a physical team than Oklahoma City. Um, So I do think that actually plays a big difference in how Joel will be able to get his points and make an impact on the game. Um, So I think we should be able to win that one. But I, like Greg said, I think Houston's going to be difficult. Um, They're playing amazing right now. Um, They have a lot of offensive firepower. And, you know, if the Heat aren't hitting shots like they are tonight, that could be a dangerous game. Last question, and then we'll go to our closing thoughts. The one thing about Thursday that I don't think a lot of people have on their radar, and maybe we're just ignoring it because we want to ignore him, Kyle Lowry's return to Miami, right? He was not on the team the last time they were there because the last game was uh, Christmas. I think he's going to get a tribute. (laughs) He is not getting a video tribute. He's getting different. (laughs) He's getting that uh, 
Let's get that old lady on uh, Joe Kim Noah middle finger, probably, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, from the fans, for sure. I'm interested to see the way their organization handles that. The The players and the coaches will love them to death, of course, but it'll be interesting to see the way the org handles that because um, it was icy, to say the least, at the end, and I think that there's no love lost between the fans and, frankly, himself to a degree. He did not endure himself to the fan base, and that's to put it lightly. So uh, that'll be an interesting thing to watch, but nor do I believe it to be a – uh, primary plot of that game. Although you never know, sometimes he'll, uh, you know, have a big game or, or, you know, he could come down the stretch and make clutch plays and be part of something. So we'll have to see, but uh, I'm glad that Terry Rozier is in a Miami heat uniform and not Kyle Lowry as we head into that game against Philadelphia. Major, any closing thoughts on tonight's game? No, I mean, this is the, game that gave me the most hope for the playoffs um and like feel like something i can actually grasp onto um yes they are missing a couple players the knicks um that is um some key players but still it's kind of how they won they responded to that big run um to kind of close it out and ended up winning by double digits um it was just a lot about it wasn't perfect still some things you can improve on um fourth quarter execution needs to get a little bit better still but just a lot of heart and a lot of uh, good basketball being played for the most part, found a way to win. That's exactly what you have to do starting into this point of the season is just wins matter more than anything. In the playoffs, it doesn't matter how you win as long as you win. Absolutely. Greg, closing thoughts? Uh, let's just keep this thing going. I, I, I've i written this team off multiple times, and I'm going to probably look stupid doing it, so – now I'm starting to hope traffic again. Uh, they got this one against New York. It's a big one. They need to get the one against Philadelphia. And then, frankly, whatever happens in Houston happens because it'll be all eyes on the game at Indy. That, that'll that be the next one that we'll circle on the calendar. But that's for a conversation for another night. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, we will close with the uh, famous... Thank you for listening to The Five on the Floor on the Five Reasons Sports Network. After all, someone needs to listen to my dad.